Hello little orcs and welcome back. We're here with another Dawnless Day Siege Battle for you today and today we have a glorious 3v2 here at Helm's Deep. I actually think, now I cast my mind back, this might be the first Helm's Deep battle replay I've actually covered. I've had a whole bunch sent in to me and a whole bunch of them actually uh, just crash uh, unfortunately. So it's a non-historical or non-law uh, Helm's Deep Siege view today unfortunately but it'll still be a glorious one I've been told by the people that sent it in. Uh, we have on the attack here we have Dorwinian, we also have uh, Gondor and I think the final attacker is also Lothlorien um, and we have Race. defending today we have Isengard and we have the goblins so I guess it's some sort of like weird scenario where like Isengard managed to capture the Hornburg and uh, defeat Rohan I guess Rohan is no longer a, a state is no longer a, a kingdom they were annexed and uh, I guess the goblins are coming down to sort of support Isengard in this defense coming down from the misty mountains and coming down to help out which is a kind of a cool idea I guess and yeah I guess like the war in the east against Mordor has been won so Gondor can turn around and help uh, with the help of Lothlorien and Dorwinian take the Hornbow back for the kingdom of men but yes it does seem as though um, the attackers have managed to destroy this wall they're now sending up some Dorwinian infantry with those javelins of theirs to try and jab their way through the Urukai infantry and pikes that are waiting in there and they're going to send up some, some berserkers are uh, are the Isengard instead, and they're going to send those guys in to try and, I guess, kill off the uh, the Javis. But Dorwinian is going to send in its constables of Dorwinian a uh, levy infantry unit just to try and uh, stop them in their tracks. It looks like the Berserkers are struggling to get out of the gate as well because of the tightly packed uh, choke point that it is, and also just like all the pikes and the uh, infantry in the way. Yeah, the Berserkers are already getting the greatest of melee charges, that is for sure. And you can see there, they are cutting down these guys the easy still they are uh, berserkers they are like elite tier they go up against constables of Darwinian it's not exactly a tough challenge for them uh, but instead the Darwinian infantry might have a new target but it might be about to jabby these uh, berserkers instead I don't know if there's still like the uh, well I don't know if it's a bug really as such um, but like the the issue where like um, Darwinian infantry or just generally any jabby infantry uh, sword unit like this like Darwinian infantry jabby while still in melee that was one of the things that made them like super powerful and super super strong that even though like you were engaging the unit it was still jabbing you while you were fighting it so it actually made it even more deadly because you were point blank range and the jabbies just didn't miss so i don't know if that's still a thing it's still an issue um i can't really remember um but that would definitely be handy for the Darwinian infantry here if they could just stand right in front of the berserkers and jabby them to pieces Looks like they're going to try and carry on with their plan there. We'll see whether that is successful. And they are fighting a little bit on this wall over here as well. Gondor's actually landed and fighting some of the goblins. The uh, defenders deciding not to defend the long uh, the long wall. I forgot what it's called now. Um, what they call this wall. They do mention it in the uh, in the film. But yeah, as you can see, instead it looks like Lothlorien is going to go and fight in the field over here against uh, Isengard. Rolls reverse, usually it's Lothlorien defending in these sort of sieges against Isengard, but no, not today. It's going to be Lothlorien trying to carve through the defences of Isengard. We'll see whether they can do that today. But yes, if you're enjoying Dawn's Days on the channel, I'd like to see some more glorious uh, Lord of the Rings sieges and battles, then feel free to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and just help the show support or just help out the channel. We're working towards 10k subs, we're very close to being there. And if you want to make sure you don't miss out on a single battle or stream or the uh, Dawn of Stays or any uh, sort of thing on the channel, then feel free to uh, hit that notification bell as well so you don't miss out. It does seem as though they've managed to kill off one of these guys from Sword Warriors. I don't know with what, maybe archers? With a bow rabble maybe shooting them? It still seems like it's a, uh, a fairly effective strategy to bring the bow rabble to these sorts of battles. Uh, that like archers are really strong in D uh, Dawn of Stays in the current version. Because uh, a lot of units like Shock Infantry and Pikes and other archers don't have any missile blocks. So even though like Mortal Bow Ravel, their terrible accuracy, have over 300 shots each volley. So they're going to hit something. All Berserkers being thrown in down here now. And they're going to try and challenge the Shock Infantry of Lothlorien. See what they can do. There isn't much else in reserve. Uh, to be, this is it, to be honest. For They've got a Bow Ravel there as well. Um, that is it. I guess they could commit more troops down the wall and try and get involved. We have got the Goblin Black Shield Guard here. So, um, yeah, we do have the Gundabad Sud mod on as well, which adds a whole bunch of 
uh, like new goblin units as well, which is quite cool. Uh, just kind of strengthen them a little bit. The Black Shield Guard are pretty tough to kill as well. Um, so they're like a little bit of an upgrade on the Goblin Blade Warriors, basically. They're like an in-between of those Blade Warriors and also the Goblin uh, High Chief Things Guard or something like that. It's kind of where they sort of lie. They're still being beaten by Gondor Swords, which is uh, no surprise there. As Dorwinian, I think Dorwinian is doing his job of jabbing his way through. Um, so yeah, they are trying to weaken the Zurichai infantry here. It also looks like we've got White and Storm as in there. The Pike's also taken some decent casualties. And it looks like Dorwin is going to keep this up. He's going to keep on jabbing his way through. Oh my gosh, and the camera angles are terrible here. Are we going to see a jabbing volley? I don't know. If I was Isengard, I'd just keep sallying out while you can so you can get a volley. Oh no, they're going to send in the Dorwinian infantry instead. Okay, interesting move. I would have just kept jabbing away while you could. Um, the Grenadiers are available as well for Isengard in this one, so we'll see whether these guys can do any work. Big nasty unit of Grenadiers here, yeah, 80 man unit, they're, they're pretty damn effective. Um, so when you, they have like three volleys to throw, like, that's three volleys of uh, grenades. It can do a lot of damage, certainly late game as well could be very useful, very good for morale and also uh, just generally for also ki killing stuff as well. They will get like two, three hundred kills if given the chance. I'd leave supply barrels for them, to be honest. Uh, I know that that's a strategy that a lot of players employ. They leave the supply barrels and make sure that's other things you get. Goblin Marauders in here. I think he's uh, another unit that also got added with the uh, the Gundabad submod. I'll leave a link for that and also for Last Breath, which is being used today as well, since we have Thor in here. So if you want to check out any of those sub mods, if you haven't already, I, bet, I do recommend you do so. I think they're really good. I don't know if the Gundabad one is entirely balanced. I know Last Breath is very much balanced in base game. I don't know if the Gundabad one is, but I imagine it is fairly well balanced. Um, he's Goblin Marauders and um, like the uh, Black Shield Guard, that's what they're called, aren't like overpowered. They don't seem like they're, they're uh, like killing off units really easy. I mean, they're struggling against uh, Gondor Sword Infantry, which is always a good sign that it's fairly well balanced. But yeah, it looks like this outer sword defense has uh, finally been beaten back. They have killed a lot of elves, though. There are a lot of weakened Galadrim Sword Infantry, uh, which is good to see, but they've still got plenty of other nasty units to come in. We've got Amroth Sentinels in here as well, which I wouldn't class in the nasty category, but... I don't know, maybe I would. Every elf, to be honest, that's got a blade is pretty scary. Even the archers are pretty handy in melee. And Haldir has arrived. I guess he's been reincarnated for this uh, recapture of the Hornberg in this weird world that we live in. I guess maybe he's... Oh, you could say he survived, I guess. This is an alternate universe. But uh, yeah, they're trying to kill his berserkers as quickly as possible. Honestly, I would just say my ammo, Haldir. You're going to need it for other things. His berserkers are good, as good as dead. They actually did manage to get the immortal bow rabble out of here, but I don't know where they're going to put them. I guess maybe on this wall up here. There isn't much space inside the actual Hornberg itself to try and take it. But yeah, it seems as though with a 3v2, the players didn't fancy defending uh, defending outside further of the Hornberg. So it looks like it's going to be a very grindy siege here today, guys. So I hope you got your snacks, got your drinks. And we're preparing for a good, long, old grind fest. Uh, as you can see, we've got mounted trolls in here as well to defend. They could be pretty handy in a choke point. Could slow stuff down. Um, but I feel like they could be also quite vulnerable to archers. Uh, especially the elven ones who could just fire some beautiful volleys over the side. I mean, even the Thelian Rangers could cause some problems here. But yeah, we've got heroes of Amon Lag. We've got uh, pole arms here. Lots of nasty units the elf, for the elves still here. But yeah, it's not over yet. Even though the elves have lost a good portion of their army in that first assault. Gondor as well has plenty of stuff. Also looks like they have gone very much with the Javi spam of the Dorwinian infantry, which is good to see. Um, honestly, I think it's the best strategy for Dorwinian. They've brought some violent guards, which are going to be handy as well. And their archers, Yard Patrol is looking uh, very good as well. I only, yeah, okay, they did bring four. Violent will be in as well, yep. Yeah. Just in case it's a sally out, I don't know, <laughs> like a reinforcement army arrives, like a whole host of servants of the eye or something just arrive and start to try and turn the uh, tide of battle. That would be fun. Uh, it looks like Dawn infantry are being pushed back by something, though. I'm not sure what. Oh, pikes have come out here. Did they try to push out? Looks like they might have tried something there. Did not work. Dawn infantry is going back in again. Hard to see quite what's going on in there. It's a shame that it's such a dark archway when we have... Well, uh, infantry currently in dark black uniforms as well. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't really help 
with the lighting. But there you go. That's a beautiful volley into the uh, into the pikes there and to the uh, infantry. I think they're yeah, just going to try and keep cycle charging, trying to jab you off as much as they can. It's very good. Um, I mean, I don't know what the archers are really shooting. I've got more little bow rabble up here. Just, I think they're trying to hit the constables. They are face on, so it's going to make it a bit more difficult. Or not. They're actually shooting another Darwinian infantry back here. Probably is a better target. We have got things like crossbows as well. Oh, scavenge crossbow. Of course, yeah, this is like goblins have crossbows as well in Gundabad somewhat. I totally forgot about this. Oh my. Yeah, they are kind of a well rounded faction now, I think. All they're short of is in cavalry. The Blackhead Guard, they're fighting on here still. I've been losing most of this entire day to uh, Gondor Sword Infantry, but instead they're just going to bottle themselves up at the end of this wall. Maybe they could have fought for this wall. Like, if they put their, like, more sub mody units out there, you could call them, like, the, uh, the newer units that the goblins have here. Put them out there, that might have been a good idea. Then all these Athelian Rangers are still firing at. There's nothing over here to shoot. Might want to get those guys off fire at will. I mean, you could shoot the bow rabble or try to shoot the bow rabble up there, but it's a, a horrendous angle you've got to be shooting at. I guess maybe the Athelian Rangers, sh yeah, shooting into the uh, Goblin Black Shield Guard, which are waiting here. They are taking a lot of casualties already. Lost about 50 or so men to the Twilight Guard here. With the side shots. They need to get something into this fight um, to try and... Uh, take this unit out before it retreats and just you've kind of just wasted your ammunition and you managed to gain the ground anyway the next choke point is going to be pretty tough though i'll probably hold my fire and start shooting at this urukai pike here because yeah this black shield guard is not dead but it's it's pretty wounded now there's 70 men lost or 70 gobos lost pretty pretty major but archers firing from all the way back here Thillian rangers and gondor archers what are they shooting at oh they're just shooting at the goblins on the wall again Bit of a waste of ammunition. I mean, maybe the later this game goes on, maybe it's not so bad. Oh, that's a very banged up Darwinian infantry. 51 of them left. I presume that's just, yeah, from just keeping focused down there. Yeah, they've wasted uh, this unit really, I guess, Darwinian, because they haven't been able to use their jabbies, and that unit got focused down. Yeah, Darwinian fighting in there, trying to do their bit. Trying to kill some Urks off. Berserk. Plenty of berserkers waiting back here as well. So when, if they do eventually break through here, Darwinian, it's going to be a pain for them. So many berserkers. Yeah, this is a tough choke point really to a take. I mean, it's going to need a lot of manpower to go through that. And look at that. Look at that. The Athelian Rangers are able to arc their shots all the way up here and hit these goblin heavy archers. That's an incrane. Incrane? An insane. Uh, like arcing shot basically I mean I was one of these goblin heavy archers and you just like thought you're pretty safe up here and then all of a sudden boop you're dead arrow through the neck they're actually going to swap some stuff around I don't know what the plan is taking the bow rabble off interesting certainly is a slow burner is a helm's deep that's for sure And it almost feels weirder with it not being a, uh, a law-friendly battle as well, because at least when it's like Rohan and uh, the elves fighting, you know they're going to be fighting for the walls quite a lot. They get, you're going to see like the explosion possibly, which we're not going to see in this one. We're not going to see the, ex like the, the animation of the uh, wall getting blown up. And also, like you know that the uh, Rise of Rohan are going to uh, eventually arrive and save the day. But in this one, there's no Rise of Rohan. There's no explosion. You don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I have a... Like I said, a sense it's going to be a very grindy siege, but it's going to be. Um, see whether the uh, defenders have it within them to beat uh, beat the attackers in a three v two. I always think um, playing this what this map, I feel like a, an advantage, almost an army advantage for the attackers is a great idea. Certainly, if they do actually hold this wall, um, the defenders, because you can use the wall above to support your uh, defenders on the wall blow so well. Oh, I think it's called the Deeping Wall, isn't it? It's called it the Our Deeping Wall. To the fight. But you can really support these two areas quite nicely uh, on this map. Certainly the nearer part of this wall. So, yeah, an extra army almost is definitely worth it because certainly as they come in, especially if you put Elven Archers on that wall to start with, you can machine gun down units as they come towards the walls. Especially if you just take ladders. 
I certainly think uh, if you go quite law accurate, you need to like Isengard really needs to have like huge numbers that you're gonna take Helm Seat. It's a bit of a pain. It's a tough nut to crack. As you can see here, the winning, they're still trying. They're still trying to get through. Bless them. I don't know if they've actually done much damage to these guys. Why and Stormers lost eight. There's some pikes in there as well. I don't know if they've lost many. The pikes are pretty banged up. But I think that's because of Javis. And also they did do a weird sally out earlier, which also threw me off. They're still fighting down there. Gorwinian, I think, is literally going to be dedicating his whole army to uh, to taking this this uh, this gate almost, which I wouldn't be surprised to be honest. I mean, it's going to be the same really for uh, Lothlorien now. They've got to dedicate most of their army to going up this windy little path and uh, trying to get in there. It looks like uh, Gondor Sword Infantry actually might be the first to have the honour. Oh, there's a cool little spot. That, oh god, this is going to be a right pain. I didn't realise this was so well defendable. As a goblin heavy archer just. Position ready to uh, shoot down his Gondor sword infantry. As soon as it engages that pike and uh, that that, uh, that swords unit there, that stormer, that's going to be such a pain to deal with. Um, yeah, they're going to have to uh, hopefully... To be honest, the attackers could be having one of those games where they might have to just wait for the defenders to run out of ammunition. It could be one of those games. It really could. So uh, you might want to just get rid of this goblin unit. I don't know what, if you can go through that gate as an attacker. Can, as a defender, you can come out through this gate. Well, it's a one-way door. I don't know. I don't know if it should be that like the case. But uh, yeah, if you can uh, use this um, like gate as an attacker, they should go through there and try and break on through. There are things waiting for them on the other side. There are um, swords here waiting. So I don't know. Maybe they can use it, the attackers. I'm not sure. But definitely, I feel like send some units through there. I and mean, Goblin Black Shield Guard is a much better uh, opportunity to try and break through than both of these gates right now that we're looking at. Looks like Dorwinian now has the, uh, the job of trying to break through. They're just going to keep on battering away. It's a shame I can't get closer to the uh, to the gate fight. The camera just goes a bit wild. Look at that. As soon as I get there. Oh, look at that, though. We can get a very cool perspective of the uh, mortal bow rabble looking through this uh, little contraption they have above the gate where Peter Jackson, you know, features himself throwing a spear down. I'm sure every uh, Lord of the Rings fan that knows their stuff probably knows that. Oh, and it does seem they can go through that gate. Good. I'm glad. Because this does open up a whole other opportunity of stuff. Um, so yeah, look how they come through this one here. Black Shield Guard here, routed. Yeah, it does seem as though I'm seeing a surge of Gondorians. Yeah, they are slowly one by one going... Oh, it's not going to be one by one as they're going through. This is could make it a bit painful of an assault. Yeah, they are coming through. There's a Gondorian there. He's going out the other door. Where is he off? The enemy is attacking our general! Very strange. Uh, enemy attacking general? Oh. Oh, the general's just getting shot at, I think, maybe. Goblin King has been committed. And yeah, Go uh, Gondor's going to have a really tough time. Look at this. This has got to be a war crime from uh, Isengard right now. The enemy units have rallied and returned to the battle. Yeah, a bit of a pokey pokey onto uh, Gondor here, just, you know, keeping them at bay. Will be a tough old fight here for these uh, these Gondorians. They've already battled the forces of Mordor not too long ago, and now they have to come and deal with Isengard and this shenanigans. I mean, killing a general, I mean, it's, he's a long way off being killed, but he's going to melee right now as a Goblin King. If they could actually somehow kill this guy, and uh, if he stays in melee for long enough, that would be a win, I guess. You know, killing a couple of generals off, might just help uh, make the, uh, the siege be a little bit easier for the attackers. The but it's going to be still a tough, tough nut, nut to crack. Uh, whole unit has perished. Not quite sure what. Maybe a supply barrel or something? 
I'm not sure, but yeah, lots of units starting to lose in here. Constables of Darwinian, Darwinian Infantry, all dying pretty speedily. And uh, yeah, I mean, as you can see over here, we've just got the elves waiting patiently for something to have. We've got Amroth Sentinels here, Twilight Guard. We can send those in. They're not too shabby in melee. Really, they need to send in a pole arm, though. But I imagine that as soon as the pole arm gets committed forward here to come and challenge these pikes, it's going to get shot to pieces by the units that are waiting on the wall up here and then also the units waiting there. But it does seem as though they are just shooting anything they can. These Gladrian Bow Warriors are now at the center of uh, the targeting for the Isengard and Goblin players here. They're just focusing them now. Like these Goblin Heavy Archers here are actually nearly out of ammo. Uh, as are the Mordor Bow Rabble. And they just keep shooting at a unit of archers. It's also nearly out of ammo. I'd, I'd save my ammo for things like Founding Guard. And uh, Galadrim Spear Warriors. And things like that. Because uh, there's only so many resupplies you can do on that supply barrel there. And they only have the one, I've just realized. Only the one supply barrel. I don't know if the other one was down here and got taken out or what. But yeah. They need to, uh, they need to hold on to those. They need to hold on to their arrows. Looks like the pikes might finally break. Yeah, pike, no, shaken, but not stirred. They've just broken the uh, Gordorian infantry there. Pikes still hold on, though. We're interested to see what it kills they got. 28 of them left. Doing a good job. Oh, and look at this now. We've got scavenged crossbows from the uh, goblins. They're just mercilessly shooting down any of these poor guys. They can't really get a great angle on what they can see, but they are sort of shooting just straight into the uh, Dawn infantry as it just advances forward through that gate. They've got a good angle there, actually, for crossbows. That is a very good spot. If you ever play like, a custom game on this, that's the spot to be. Oh, and yeah, Gondor has gone on through. Oh, yeah, this is just... This is just sacrilege. Um, right now, we're just seeing goblin crossbows fire into the back of these Gondorians here. And they're just feeding kills for the uh, goblins. Just sad to see. These Gondorians... Uh, probably far superior to the infantry in front of them. They're going to murder. Yeah, it seems as though the elves also been committed in here. Look at all these routes of troops. Oh, so many Gondorian swords being wasted. And now we're going to see Twilight Guard going in here. Fairly healthy as well. Uh, for a bow unit, they are also very good at melee, as most uh, elven units are. You can see here the uh, Go Goblin Black Shield Guard. They're dying pretty damn quickly. There's that Goblin Black Shield Guard that, yeah, murdering, murdering these guys. The war crime. I want to see how many kills these scavenged crossbows have got at the end of the game. It's got to be a lot. I'll be just resupplying these guys constantly. And the attackers need to stop going into this, uh, this, this spot. It's not healthy. Uh, doesn't look like anything else could be going up there. I thought for a moment these Spear Warriors might be uh, given the job of doing uh, going in there. But I don't think a Phalanx would be a good idea. And looks like nothing else is being committed over here as well. Gondor just kind of... Waiting out as is uh, Lothlorien and they're just going to kind of, I don't know, wait wait for, I don't know, the, the, the North Pole to melt or something. They, they, they need a push. They've got to do something, unfortunately. Uh, the uh, Twilight Guard, yeah, down to 48 already. I mean, I guess they could just keep sending support, seeing if they can just use all the ammo up for the defenders and then break through. If they do that, then they, they have some sort of uh, chance. They actually are starting to lose here. There might be some progress being made here. It also helps that the scavenged cross was aren't firing anymore. Um, but they're actually still the Twilight Guard are losing. Oh no. It's a very evil one. I honestly think if they just put little and often into this uh, into this fight, they can maybe make something happen here. We're gonna see some yeah, wavering sword warriors going in. They're not gonna make much of a difference. 
And yeah, Dillian Range is now getting focused down from the walls above. These guys have very little armor, so they are going to get just a, like poked with holes pretty quickly. Seeing a Gladium Sword Boy with a lot more healthy going through as well. And that might be a good target for the uh, scavenge crossbows. It's a shock infantry, so missile block is uh, non existent. So that might be the way through. If they can break through this choke point, which is a big if. Oh, have they broken the Twilight Guard? Uh, no, they haven't. They just broke that other Gladium Sword Warriors. Um, if they do manage to break through here, which like, is a big if, there's still lots of Marauders and other things dotted around waiting. They could then try and support the gate uh, attack down here and support Dorwinian uh, out. I mean, whether Dorwinian wants to maybe think about setting some uh, forces to maybe go uh, around and support that other choke point. I don't know. They might want to, because I don't think this is the answer either over here. I mean, the, the Goblins are nearly out of ammo. Which is something. They've got to go through a pike unit. It's just a whole thing. I don't think that's going to be the way through either. But Gondor's going to persist. I mean, they're just sending forward little units at least. It's it's not much. Not coming long. I mean, they are actually using the Athelian Rangers and shooting the, into this, uh, this choke point and hitting some stuff as well. But uh, yeah, it's it's a hard angle to be trying to use here. If they, I don't know how far the Athelian Rangers can uh, traverse up this slope, if they can at all. But if they could shoot into the backs... That would help a lot, uh, help the situation out a lot. And looks like we're going to see Amroth Sentinels going in now. So yeah, Lord Florian's not giving up the hope of breaking through here. He's seen a sliver of hope, and he's going to take it. These Black Shield Guard, they're going to need a little bit more. A little bit more will help, I think, soon. Yeah, Amaral Sentinels. I mean, this is a healthy unit, and it's already down to 64. The Gla Goblin Black Shield Guards, they are losing, but it doesn't really matter because they just get so much support from the archers. The archers kill them off quicker than they're dying themselves. Yeah, look at that. Amaral Sentinels. It's such a small defense now holding it. I mean, the Marauders are next, so it's, it's, a much, it's not much of an appealing uh, option either once you break through this sword line. You then got to deal with shock infantry, and there's more archers on this next wall. So yeah, it's going to be tough. I don't know what the... Um, and there's another scavenge crossbows here. This might get sent up to uh, man that wall. I don't think it's doing much here because Dorwinian's not really making much progress. They are... There you go, Javi's going off. Wait, they do... Ah! They didn't even get to use all their javelins. But yeah, Dorwinian's still fighting for this gate here. So I feel Isengard's doing a great job without the support really of archers. Still got the constables of Dorwinian here as well. Yeah, they're really not making progress. I mean... Dorwinian setting in inferior infantry, uh, like heavy, they, these are only heavy sword infantry, up against very heavy. So yeah, it's, it's not going to be an easy, an easy fight. Dorwinian here, he's going to need just patience. He's going to keep trying to go through there. We're seeing Citadel guards now being sent out. I mean, they're not going to push through. Speed is very much more of a holding unit than it is of a, uh, an aggressive unit, so I don't know what the plan is there. Dorwinian is falling back his infantry to allow the constables to go in, so I guess who can use those javelins. Yeah, not looking uh, too favorable in the gates still either. The scene looks like more Twilight... Oh, no. Yeah, more Twilight Guard and more Galadrian Bow Warriors going in. The shock infantry is also being sent in now, so clearly the goblins being a little unnerved. So yeah, the shock infantry should be able to push back these elves. I'd imagine. The uh, scavenge cross was now going to melee. These guys earn a silver chevron. I don't know what they started on. Probably one bronze chevron, I'd imagine. They're up to a silver chevron. It's actually insane. Yeah, these uh, elves are actually losing here yeah, because of the shock infantry getting involved. battling away in
silvery armor here of the Twilight Guards getting very red with all that blood, the orc blood on there. Yeah, and look at this. It's going to be same old. I wouldn't even start firing yet with the uh, scavenge crossbows. I just hold the fire and just wait for you to kill, uh, for these guys to die from the shocking tree. Wait for the next wave, which looks like it's going to be bundle sword infantry getting the joy of going in there. Or, or this healthy unit of Amroth Sentinels. Yeah, it looks like the attackers respect to them. They're just going to keep persisting with this mad, this mad plan. Where, surely they could get archers? Um... Oh yeah, here you go. Haldir, a perfect unit for the... Perfect man for the job. Surely they can just set up archers here? I mean, even like, um, just ask for Dorwinian's archers. Set up archers here, and then just start shooting into the backs of the scavenged crosswords. It'll send them packing quite quickly. And you would unlock this choke point, or you'd at least have less problems in this choke point. Yeah, look at that. The crosswords. This is merciless. This has got to be a war crime. I don't know where you have to go to to report a war crime in Middle Earth. But this is it. The elves, they fight on. It's like, how is Haldor going in? Haldor is going into melee. Okay, so the elves have given up. Haldor has so much ammo as well left. I'm yeah, Lothlorien's just given up, it seems, almost. He's th throwing Haldor in there. He's going to get him out, but it's going to be close, and he's actually wavering and breaking. Look at that. I thought he was, like, because this, this part of the unit was outside the walls, he was bringing them outside to maybe shoot onto the, uh, the crosswords up there, but no. Instead, he sent them in to go and get himself killed. Okay. Yeah, I mean, now it's surely it's down to Dorwinian to try and, like, with his range units to try and shoot into the back of these crossbows. In fairness, they are, like... Enemy general is there you go. Enemy general's dead. I presume that's Haldir dead. Um, in fairness, these crossbows are nearly out of ammo, which is, uh, I guess, A+. Plus. I also didn't realize that the trolls have been being focused down, and they've actually lost a troll. Look at this guy. Urgh. He's just having a little rest on the ground. Uh, but yeah, Gordon sword imagery going in. Same result. Uh, there must be thousands of dead troops here. I mean, it's actually quite close in numbers now. 3,400 against uh, 3,500. But yeah, the amount of attackers that must be dead here must be numbering in the hundreds, if not the thousands. Well, maybe not thousands, but thousand. This, this must be, what, the fourth or fifth Gondol Sword Infantry unit I've seen go through this gate now? And it's the fourth or fifth one I'm seeing getting machine gun get down by archers and crossbows. That is disgusting. Yeah, there you go. They held. They hold on. And it's just archers and crossbows now holding this gate. It's not exactly a tough defense. I mean, in fairness, there are shock and trolls just waiting behind to charge in. But it's not going to be. A, it's not a, a tough thing to get. Try and break through. It's just that you just got to get rid of that archer, for, this crossbow first. And like I said, it's very easy to do if they just think about it. Um, but yeah, Dorwinian is so focused on the wrong side. Well, on his side that he's not thinking to come and. Uh, like to come and help out with his like his teammates. Like, but when he's been here, he's very just one dimensional. Now, thinking about his one gate, he's just got to try and break through. His Dormin infantry is winning though against Urukai infantry. That's something, I guess. You know, it's a positive. He's breaking through somewhere, but he needs to really. He does need to uh, think about. Maybe uh, helping out his teammates. I mean, Gondol's actually come over here to help out because he'd rather uh, join th the gate attack than help out help out over here. Heroes of Amon Lang going in. All of a sudden, he's got a bit of a lag spike. I'll just zoom out for a minute and see if that sorts it out. Very strange that we now get a lag spike as like the numbers are starting to drop. Maybe it's because of the sheer amount of uh, dead that there are in that spot. I really do not know.
Okay, so we are back. I just made a uh, quick cut, just kind of let the replay just play itself out. Nothing's changed. It's literally been like maybe like 30 seconds. It's just getting quite laggy, and I was just one, uh, seeing if there was anything I could sort of like uh, alter or stop or change to, to sort that out. But it seems like it just sorted itself out. It's a weird, laggy patch. Um, yeah, there's no change. Heroes Arm and Lank still here dying. Look at that. This is getting murdered. Rear shots, it's crossbows, armor piercing. It's all just a nasty combination. And just a waste of elven lives. It really is. I mean, they'll, they'll be getting a few kills here and there, these uh, heroes on Amon Light. They are fighting with just crossbows. So, I mean, they're easy to mow down as an elf, but you're getting mowed down yourself. It's almost a race of who can kill who quicker. It's not a race I don't think the uh, elves are going to win. They have broken some of these archers, which I guess is a success, but still plenty of them to go. And the uh, Mortal Bow Raveler here as well, so it's 300 more orcs you've got to kill off there. Well, maybe not all 300, but there. You, that area, that, that amount. Anyway, it looks like uh, also the attack has given up on this slope here. They didn't really actually... It's it's a hard, a hard point to attack, really, um, because, yeah, the hikes kind of just dominate that area whether they could have used their own pikes or pole arms to no contend with that I, they haven't even tried that which i thought might be worth a go the archers here are also out of ammo and gone so um yeah they might want to might want to think about it but maybe they think we'll just go through this breach point because yeah now the crossbows here are out of ammo these scavenged crossbows maybe they're thinking we can now just go through with sheer numbers and elite units and try and break through i mean the heroes of ammo line Lank now might get a bit of success, but they are fighting Shock Infantry. And Shock Infantry does excel against Spears. And that's the sound of trolls getting involved. Oh boy. There you go. Yeah, these guys now coming in is just going to push the balance power in this fight way back in favor of the Gobbos and the uh, forces of Isengard. I mean, they weren't really ever not in their favor. Yeah, here's Vaman Lunk losing. The trolls just trying to get in there, get a few kills. Most units, though, for the, um, the defenders now out of ammunition. Uh, they have used some white and grenadier ammo at some point. I missed that, but I don't know. I'm presuming it's in the gate here, and they just did not have much success. I don't know. But we've got Mortal Bow Rabble here with some ammo left, but that is it. They must have used up their supply barrels early, and I just never saw them being activated, or they've decided just not to use them. That also might be a rule, um, which is a fair enough, because, yeah, supply barrels on the Helm's Deep, kind of painful, that's for sure. But, yeah, Violent Guards are here now fighting. Um, that might be causing the Wyand Stormers to, to die as well because we actually have some proper elite swords now being thrown in to try and challenge us at this point. Again, though, it's still not looking good for when you eventually break through that unit because it's just Berserkers waiting uh, here, as you can see at the door. They're the waiting to go in. We've got A heroes of Amon Lank dead, but there's uh, a Gondol Spear infantry that's gone into support. So Gondol still somehow has men to throw in. I don't know what they're doing. The trolls in here as well. It's a shame it's a, such a dark map. Even in like the bright sunlight. It's like over here. It looks lovely. As soon as you get towards like the Hornberg, it looks a little bit, a little bit dark, a little dingy. Unless we look this way, there is a bit better this way. Okay, Gondo here. They're still being pushed back. Forces are good. They could do with getting some archers to just shoot up there and try and do, make a difference. Shoot in there, try and kill some trolls, maybe the shark, force them back. I don't know why there's pikes on the wall, by the way. Not where you want them to be, really. Maybe they're just parading their men around because they have the time and the will to do that. Looks like more heroes of Amon Lank break of 14. It's actually kind of high for them, I feel like. But those guys usually fight to the last man. I guess they have no general. That probably is affecting them. 
Yeah, Gondol Spears on their own are not going to be uh, the ones to break through there, that's for sure. Um, we're seeing the Yard Patrol now land on the wall. And the Thillian Rangers are shooting. It's something, I don't know what. There's nothing around them. Um, but yeah, we are now seeing... Oh, there's a Twilight Guard down here with full ammo. I don't know, they kept this one hidden. Um, but that's shooting... I think it's shooting the supply barrel. Which is not a bad idea, but I wouldn't have, like... By shooting it, surely you're you're making a, a point of interest here for the uh, for the defenders. We're going to probably just start trying to use it. I also would probably just fire fire arrows. I think fire arrows uh, do well. They do morale damage. Um, I but I can't remember if the elves can fire fire arrows or not. They do um, morale damage, and they also uh, so they'll break that supply barrel just like that without even killing the unit. I also don't know if the Twilight Guard at that extreme angle actually can uh, loop the ar arrows over the wall and make a difference in this fight. But this is where I'd be, sh I'd be shooting my arrows. Don't worry about the supply barrel. Just try and kill as many of these guys in front of you. In front of the Gondorians, anyway. Gondor Spear Infantry losing. O Rabble are now coming over to try and shoot archers down here, I think. Yeah, they want to try and kill these Twilight Guard. I mean, I sh could shoot the uh, Bow Rabble. It seems like they were having a, some decent effect shooting through these crenellations earlier. The goblins. It's still about 20 minutes to go. It's still not looking good for the defenders when it comes to balance of power. And they have a troll, you got to think. Involved in that balance power. It's about 600 man difference now, so it seems as though, um, even though they were quite close, literally about five, ten minutes ago, about 3,000 each, uh, there's been some progress made. There's been progress made. The grenadiers, though, I wonder if they'll get thrown up onto the wall and they might start to grenade in there because that might not be a bad idea for them. But I also wonder whether they're saving these guys really for uh, pole arms and things. I mean, I'd be saving them for the founding guard and for maybe like. Uh, Gladium Spear Guard, things like that. Um, oh, it's not Spear Guard, Spear Warriors, aren't they? They're called, yeah. I'd be saving my ammo for that. I would not be uh, using Grenadiers on just big... Well, unless it's like an insane blob of, uh, of infantry, I might use it on that. But you want to save them for the pole arms, really, especially since you're out of ammo on just about everything else and things that counter pole arms you're kind of short on. Things like other pikes. In fairness, if they can hold them at these breach points and they can stop the pikes from setting up properly, they might have a chance of winning anyway. It seems like it's that sounds so weird. It just sounds like it's almost like echoey or something in this in this uh, gate here. But the berserkers are in here anyway. They're fighting against spears. They're gonna have a great time. Um, grenadiers are still they're going up onto the wall. So this looks like the grenadiers are gonna get committed to uh, blowing up just about everything here. They don't want to have lots in here themselves under the uh, defenders because otherwise the grenadiers will get a lot of friendly fire. To be honest, I would just keep these grenadiers safe and sound. I mean, you could have them, I guess, with the... That would be hilarious. Have the mortal bow rabble um, be replaced with grenadiers. So as they come rushing up, this, up these steps here, they just get blown up by grenades. That would be hilarious. Now we're seeing full ammunition Twilight Guard go in here. Get them out of here. Come on, attackers. Have some respect. Oh, here we go. I think we're going to see execution at its finest here. Yep, you can already see the explosions going off. Oh, my gosh. The grenades going in are just doing a lot of damage here. I'm on Lank. Spear. Um, Spearman of Gondor. Twilight guy. God, they're all, like, getting blown up here. This is going to be sad. They only have three volleys, so we've got to be careful. Yeah, they're about half ammo now. We're going to throw another volley. That is brutal. I don't know why we're not getting the explosion noises. They are going to break their own archers by doing this. Just do a lot of morale damage to your own troops as well. You can see they did try to pull back the shock and the trolls. It looks like the white hand grenadiers are going to just hold on to the last bit of ammo. But the attackers have made some progress technically. The Twilight Guard is still in here with ammo. Ah, disgusts me to see it. A lot of units are wavering. 2,100 against 2,700 now. It's not looking good. We have got Berserkers in here losing to Citadel Guards and Violent Guards. The Wine Storm is in a pike down here as well. 
I don't know why the Berserkers are really losing that fight, but they are. They're fighting stuff they actually should be excelling against. We're going to see pole arms being set up, so Found and Guard are going to get thrown into that choke point. I guess that's maybe to try and match the Urukai Pikes and maybe try and force uh, that choke point back in their favor. Not a bad idea. Uh, I also would start thinking about maybe uh, attacking over here again if I was the attackers because there's just a white hand stormer here. That is a very uh, vulnerable position. I get a pole arm up there, maybe an Amaroth Sentinel. That's a lovely little combination. You take that choke point, you make another threatening point uh, to try and reopen up that sort of front. Maybe just, you know, force some defenders back over there. Make it easier for the attackers that are getting mauled by trolls there because this is horrendous stuff. These poor guys get guys being uh, getting whacked about. And there you go, Twilight Guard down to 21 men left. With so much ammo still to spend. Oh, and there we are just going to see all the Gladium Spear Warriors go up in here. Again, the attackers just feel like they've been very one-dimensional in this game. Like, Dorwinian's been one-dimensional. He's just literally this entire game being dedicated to try and smash through here. Uh, we are seeing the, um, the Berserkers, by the way, start to die to Faring Guard. They tried to they fall back, did the attackers, and it baited out these Berserkers, which is, I guess, a plus in itself. The Fountain Guard are going to punish these Berserkers, that's for sure. But that's a nice angle. And watch the Berserkers slowly dwindle down as they get impaled by pikemen. The pole arms. It doesn't seem like they're really in formation properly. It still doesn't seem like it's making much of a difference. We're going to see Seldo and Bridge Wars come forward as well. See, I don't know why <laughs> Gondor felt like he had to throw forward his Fountain Guard. The perfectly good pole arm here of Dorwinian. Gondor could have gone up somewhere else. It does seem like it's going to be made or broken here. But yeah, look at this. Polom's dying instantly because they just can't form up in Phalanx coming through this uh, choke point. So they're going to die really quickly. They're going to get overwhelmed by Orcs here. It's a mix, this battle so far, of just lack of, uh, well, stupidity from the attackers a little bit. Like, persistence and some just forlorn hope here, this is, which is this. This is a forlorn hope. It's only for things like pole arms. Um, I mean, the swords and stuff could definitely do it. They, they are sending violent guards down in this direction. So it seems like Dorian is finally going to actually try and help elsewhere. But yeah, look at that. Pole arms breaking. And like, uh, they're down at 24 and 16. That's actually not horrendous. And the Amaroth Sentinels at 77 wavering. That is a bit of a concern. But it's because they have no general. So Lothlorien's basically out. Um, but that still is not making much of a difference for the balance of power, it seems. But yeah, Dorian and Gondor are left. Looks like they're just going to persist with this one breach. Uh, point up point now which is definitely not a good idea bridge wars also just have pulled through those berserkers which i know there's like probably one of them left but that's the whole point berserkers will hold on to the last man and make you uh, and force you to fight like one guy with a hundred yeah the bridge wars now fighting the stormers There you go, it seems like the bridge was just going to have to poke their way through that. Oh, it's a shame I can't get a better angle. I'd like to get a bit closer. Let's see if we can. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just the angle. The camera's not great when you get towards this gate. Uh, it's a little bit better, I guess. So maybe just find like a camera submod to put, up, put on. But I always, it's already dicey enough as it is with replays and crashing. I, having extra submods on is not great either. Arrow Sentinels, Sentinels here, still fighting on. I don't know how there can be 16 more minutes of this. Like, Unless they're going to try and make a breach somewhere else, but I feel like they've got to, they've got to make a go of it now uh, rather than later. Like, send some of these Citadel Guards or Gondor Spears. I don't know why Gondor brought so many spears as well. Send some of these guys, throw them up through that, uh, that uh, gate there, try and just tie down stuff, 
and then send a violent guard to try and kill this wire stormer. Maybe two, uh, if it needs two. And then uh, they don't have any. Oh, they have one more pole arm. Send that Seldon Bridge Ward as well over there, and you can break through, and you might actually make some progress. Open up a third front. I don't think Isengard and Go uh, the goblins have enough for a third front. And they certainly don't have enough for a third front. They're going to keep sending out just random little units. I mean, it's just bow rabble. That's 130 odd men that are that they're going to need, and might make the difference between army losses and victory. Like, yeah, that's uh, it's an interesting one. Oh, are they resupplying? No, they're rallied. Okay, and they use more grenades somewhere. I don't know where. They use more grenades because they've got even less ammo now. They're going back down the slope. I don't know where they're using their, their grenades at this point. Maybe to blow up Seldon Bridge Wards? I'd be, I mean, you could try and blow up the Fountain Guard. Could they stand? Yeah. Could they stand at the top here? Which is what exactly they're going to do. I want to see these grenades fl uh, fall down. Hey, look at them. They're up there. Yeah, they're going to throw. There we go. And in they go. Blow it up, those uh, Fountain Guard. Only they had full ammo or something. I think they've well, they got enough for maybe one more chuck. There you go. There's some more grenades going in. I mean, I guess that's why you put bow rabble to hold these guys in place. And you could just uh, blow them up with grenades. It's not a bad duo, actually, in the end. The um, but yeah. Cowards. yeah. They still have a little bit of ammo. I guess it just takes them a lot longer because the full units are throwing the, uh, the grenades, maybe. I really don't know. Scavenge crossbows running outside the gates, providing some free kills. But there is nothing now holding back. Oh, God. They should probably push forward. Before they get blown up in more stuff. Okay, now the Seldon Bridge Wards are the target of the grenades. And that will be the full uh, usage of those grenadiers now. Yeah, that's a very de bu busted Seldon Bridge Ward. Oh my gosh, they still have ammo? Seriously? But oh, now they're out of ammo. All right. Yeah, that, that is uh, a fairly decent use of those grenadiers. It's a shame they maybe didn't resupply. I feel like I didn't, didn't see them resupply. And we are seeing Goblin Marauders break. I think they just tried to sally out the uh, this doorway here. And now they're getting killed off by uh, violent guards. Yeah, I don't know if the trolls can follow through, but yeah, it's, it's it's not looking too bad now. I think the defenders might be okay. I don't know. It's hard to say, really. I mean, they still got some nasty units here, like Seldrum, um, Seldrum, um, not Seldrum Bridgewards. The winning infantry the here, an unit. and that are definitely uh, like. I have a lot of jabbies they could kill the trolls. The archers here still have ammo, which is good. I mean, I don't know what they're shooting. Goblin Marauders. And then... They've got more Yard Patrols here. Yeah, they've still got stuff. I mean, the attackers still definitely have the ability to do it. It's just whether they have the uh, the mindset to go through the right... Uh, through the choke points that they should be going through. Because this, this is not working for them. I mean, they might eventually, but it's not at the moment working for them. How many trolls are left? Five out of ten. I mean, that's possible then that they can... Um, yeah, it's definitely, uh, like, doable. Definitely could kill them all. Our men are breaking off. We'll see. I'm just going to fast forward and just see whether the attackers make a move anywhere. They are just standing around now, just jabbing stuff, which is not a bad idea either. They want to try and use this uh, excess ammunition they have up. Um, like, before they go in. Like, these uh, Dawning Infantry should use all their javelins on Urukai Pikes and grenadiers and i think we've got more storms in there it just seems like they have an endless supply the supply barrel's moving i've never seen that okay how the heck do they manage that i didn't realize you could dismount it you're gonna seriously send the supply barrel into battle just one guy one man in his barrel being sent in and it looks like we're gonna see another assault here so yeah violent guards going in Yeah, look, at, look, they're just waiting immediately. There you go. Finally, guards are come popping on through. Met instantly in the face by trolls. Oh, they did kill one almost instantly, so... There you go. Four trolls remain. Uh, maybe the violent guards are going to be the ones to do it. Send them in, boys. Send them in. If you're still watching at this point, credit to you. I hope you've been enjoying your snacks and your drink in this siege. It's certainly been a glorious fight. It's been a fun one to, uh, to play as well. Oh, not to play, to, to commentate over. 
Elm's Deep Sieges are going to be a grindy one, that's for sure. You're not going to see anyone being, being rolled over as a defender. I feel like uh, even as a like a Total War newbie, you could you could make a reasonable defense of this. The, it's just such an impregnable fortress. I really was wondering how they were going to make it. Like They were going to make it tough uh, to defend the uh, devs. They are going to make it like tough to defend, but... Um, and like so it make for more fun siege battles where they're gonna make it like a law self and try and make it almost impregnable and just like a pain to try and attack i feel like they kind of go a bit more with the latter but it's still like so when you come to campaign you are going to need a lot of troops to take it which is what it's all for like the maps are obviously there for multiplayer but uh obviously their main aim is for campaign like they want to like factions like say like Rohan and the Dwarves are going to have a tough game. They're going to be like down to like their reliant fortresses like Moria and uh, and also the Hornburg to try and like win like, win their campaign, like try and turtle up and just try and survive there until they get a chance to break out. That's kind of like the aim of these maps. Yeah, Violent Guard's dying instantly. It's, they shouldn't really be. Like if you look at the units that they're actually fighting, maybe bar the Berserkers, you're like, Ah, they should they should be fine. These trolls I guess the trolls might be a bit of a problem, but it shouldn't really be. Um again, could they send Darwin and infantry and send those over to the uh Wine Stormers? Do they have decent missile block? Because Wine Stormers would start to crumble if they started to uh, get jabbed to pieces. I mean again, going through this gate, is it really worth it? I mean they are fighting actually in it again. Not that it's been really the most high octane of a, of a choke point. It's been no movement at all from either side. The Vanguard are in there, though. That might help out. The Goblin King's also in there. I can see him right at the front line there. This is There is the Goblin King. He's right in the front line. He's got a javi and a shield. He's clearly been, you know, in the trenches. The Founding Guard are doing something. They're doing some strange formation of either retreating or advancing. Whatever it is, I don't like it. Yeah, you can see here, the archers trying to still shoot in from uh, from outside there. Yeah, and could have no joy there. Not a good angle to try and shoot in there. Should, like I said, they should be trying to like set up somewhere over here and see if they can loop their arrows into this uh, big blob that's over here. Because they haven't really tried that. They did shoot onto the walls a bit here. You can see like the dead uh, archers on the coronation. So they can clearly reach that angle. The frames go down when I come over here. Imagine being one of these guardsmen. You're just like, well, I guess we'll try and break through, but it's going to be a toughie. But these violent guards, it's like as soon as you come through the door, you just met with an orc in your face. And there you go. The trolls finally break. That might make a difference. We are seeing the goblin marauder start to die as well. There's a pole arm here as well. Yeah, certainly been an interesting one, that's for sure, this this fight. I don't know how, I guess maybe the pikes are keeping this uh, this choke point alive for the defenders. But actually, also the founding guard aren't in there anymore, that also is helping. I was going to say, the found guard probably should really have been the ones making a big push here. And if they kill the Goblin King, if they actually managed to kill him in melee in this fight, then they have a good chance, I guess, of mass riding. So if Goblin King is down to 83... It's doable, I guess. He's kind of weak enough. He's also in the front line. Then, it, then if this side then mass routes because the Goblin King's dead, that could be Our huge. Men, men are wavering. And that's the trolls. Okay, they, they just rallied. Go straight back in and get killed probably immediately by the guard. But that's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. There you go. The Goblin King is dead. Okay, that is now a problem for the uh, goblins. I mean, they're not going to just master out like that in an instant. But it's going to make this choke point a lot more doable now for the attackers. And that's really what they needed was a general being killed off. And that's what they've got. They've got their general. They've got their win. Again, could they get spray all these yard patrols? Just get, start shooting in here. You really start to clean up this, uh, this choke point now. Looks like we're going to see uh, Dorwinian infantry getting thrown in. Not going to be able to use their javis. But I guess more bodies into this front line. Again, could they start... Oh, they are over here. Good, good, good. This is what they need to do. Get the Darwinian infantry in here. Start to jab at these guys. They've not killed a single Stormer yet, but... 
could they, they, they could potentially kill some. Apparently they're a melee. Might be with some retreating uh, Gondorians or something, I don't know. Yeah, they need to do something about this choke point. That could have been dealt with us so long ago. Just again here, it's Eldon Bridge Ward. Send it up this slope, send it in. I don't know if the, they should stay in Phalanx going up that slope. It's not a horrendous uh, res choke point. And we've got General here waiting as well. Vine Lord Bien. We could the Vine Lord, you could almost have the Vine Lord Bien just ride up that slope, try and charge the other uh, swords. It might also work. I don't know if it would. It's just a sword unit. Cav will excel against swords on a charge. Even if it's a uh, Wyand Stormer. They are going to need more swords in here. Or just more forces generally. I think we are seeing yeah, Dawning Infantry now up here. Join the fight. Might even have put up a little bit. But generally. Uh, they're, not, they're not the greatest of infantry as we've seen. They don't get past choke points very quickly. Unless they use those javelins of theirs. I like how the Grenadiers are winning in melee down here. What are they doing? Oh, we have, to be fair, there's only Athelian Rangers in there now. I think... Yeah, they pulled back everything else. Had to defend the... Uh, but just the outside of the gates. I don't really know what they're planning on doing here. I'm going to fast forward a little bit because... Again, there's not really much going on. It's just the same old choke points taking place here. So we're going to fast forward. Just see if anything happens. See if... Uh, who breaks first? Will it be the, the attackers? Or will it be the defenders? Lives. We are seeing some men start to break now. I think the Goblin King's broken. Um, that is a... I don't know, it's a Thelian Rangers, actually. I think the Goblin King we General might already be gone. I can't see his marker there. Um, so that's a bit of a win, I guess, for the Goblins. But yeah, if they can break these units here, the uh, Berserkers are starting to die as well. That is obviously a big plus as well. Whether the is, these Dawning Infantry can start the to kill, like to Javi while in melee, that would really help the, uh, the cause out. But it doesn't look like it's the case. They are winning anyway in melee. Killing off Marauders. But these Marauders will have so many kills. They've earned... Like, like they, they've been paid for, like, hand over fist easily. Uh, I mean, most of the units have. I mean, they did a really good job. And it's now. certainly giving me ideas for what I would do if I was having to defend this uh, this citadel. Uh, like, what I would do. I, I would definitely have, like, dedicated units here just to machine gun down into that. I'd also be using supply barrels uh, to try and resupply as much as possible. Uh, crossbow units, certainly, on that. On, that um, on this walkway is clearly very effective. Very, very effective. But yeah, it looks like... I mean, it looks like just slowly but surely it looks like the uh, attackers are breaking in. Still little guards here now as well. I mean, it's just kind of like an... I think it's just more that like it's a if... It's not an if now, it's a, it's a when uh, will the defenders break because the Goblin King was kind of what was holding this uh, defense together. I mean, obviously so was the Wyand Storm in general, but he's in no danger of dying. Um, but yeah, if they break through... The, like the goblin forces over here, which it looks like they're going to do soon with the Marauders, uh, are wavering. Yeah, there you go. One gone. I think this is going to cause a mass round now. Army fleeing. losses are in effect. Looks like we're going to see a pike shift over. That will now allow the pole arms to push back this way against the gate. You can imagine. Unless the pikes are just going to defend the bottom of the steps. Uh, they might do that. But the berserkers, they've still got to kill them off. And that's you've got to kill every single last one of those. They don't break. I can't see many of them either. They are down there in the dark. Depths. A zoom in. It does look as though evil is going to be removed from Helm's D. They are going to finally retake this great citadel in this unusual universe where it was lost. It looks like the dream team of Dorwinian elves of Lothlorien and also Gondor are going to be successful. Looks like the pikes here got broken. We might see a bit of a mass route taking place here. Grenadiers are starting to go. I uh, don't think the Berserkers can break, so they all fight on. Uh, the General, though, here is yeah, also looking pretty healthy, so I don't think he's going to mass route anytime soon. Unless the Dawning Infantry makes a dash, which I don't think they can. They're still in melee down here. Uh, they are jabbing uh, while in melee, but I don't know if that's because they had a different target. I'm not really sure. Well, they are trying to pull out of that combat. That's why they're losing. And yeah, look at this. You can see the uh, Wyand Stormer generally is uh, coming out of the gate. I don't know. That's just because... I don't know. Maybe he just wanted to deal with the Dormant Infantry. Maybe he wanted to go back to back with these pikes. I'm not really sure what his plan is. But it looks like it's uh, it's GG anyway. He's just accepting the fate and trying to get it... Maybe just trying to get it over with and done with quicker. Wyand Stormer's here. Actually, are going onto the wall. 
Maybe he's trying to prolong the fight. I really don't know what he's doing, but he's trying to make an escape here. If they kill this Berserker off, which they should do very shortly, there's only seven of them left. The uh, the general here might just mass out uh, with army losses because he is literally all that's left, I think, now. There's a 204. I mean, against 1,600. It's unlikely he's going to win. Uh, but they have got the uh, attackers down to 1,600 from 6,700. It's pretty damn good. Uh, yeah, he's mass routing now. There you go. Uh, oh, no, so the Berserkers did mass route. There you go. I did not realize they could. And there's that, still that sword. Of course, I totally forgot that we had that sword that was still alive there. But there you go. A valiant defeat for the Goblins and for Isengard. Um, it was a solid, solid fight. A, a really good defense by the defenders as well. Um, and yeah, uh, I mean, that kind of comes from obviously stacking up in that in the Hornburg and making it such a hard place to try and take. But yeah, Vasily Sidesev sent this one in playing as the Goblins. Uh, he got 467 kills with his crossbows, 437 with the other one, his trolls, 161 kills. Archers, 171 kills. His shock got 177, 188. Uh, 202 kills with the Marauders here as well. And then one of his Black Shield guards getting uh, 205 kills. And we have Villain playing as Isengard. Uh, 301 kills with one of his Stormers is impressive. His Berserkers, 145, 149. Uh, and then we've got Archers here. Bow Rebels, 277 kills. Grenadiers, 333 kills. Very nice. And we have uh, McElroy here playing as um, one of the Lothlorian armies. 199 kills with his Amaroth Sentinels, 196 kills with the Galadrium Sword Warriors, 145 with the uh, Sword Warriors here as well. His uh, Heroes of Amalank, even though they struggled, all got over 100 kills, one got 190 kills. Uh, 297 kills with the Twilight Guard here, 273, 165, some solid kills there. Then Rex North playing as this Darwinian army, 101 kills with his Darwinian infantry here. Um, and then he's got a uh, Darwinian infantry with 117 kills, 283 kills, 224 kills with the Violent Guards. All of them did pretty, pretty well though. 197 as well. And then his archers not getting up to much in that battle. And then we have Leon here playing as Gondor. Uh, his sword infantry, yeah, none of them actually got over 100 kills. One of his spears got 222 kills though. It was pretty solid. Uh, his Fountain Guard got 139 kills. And one of his, uh, Dawn Rangers got 250 kills, which is very good for them. But there you go, guys. That is today's Dawnless Day Siege Battle. If you did enjoy, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. And I'll see you folks in the next glorious Lord of the Rings Siege. Until then, bye for now.